Formula One is currently gaining popularity, particularly in the United States, thanks in part to the Netflix series Drive to Survive, which has embroidered the sport's nerdery with artful camera work and insight into the lives of its protagonists. Of the 10 team principals in the sport, only Mercedes boss Toto Wolff and his arch-rival Christian Horner, a Briton who runs the Red Bull team, have ever won a world championship. But unlike Horner, Wolff sees himself as both a competitor and someone shaping the future of a multi-billion dollar corporation. And it is that mindset that has spearheaded Mercedes' unprecedented winning streak. Without further ado, let's look at the life of one of F1's most successful team principals. From his early childhood to his racing career, business ventures, and impacts on Mercedes. Wolf was born on the 12th of January 1972 in Vienna to a Polish mother and a Romanian father. But unlike many others on the F1 circuit, did not grow up in a wealthy family. He witnessed his beloved father battle brain cancer since he was eight years old. Toto's father then tragically passed away when he was a teenager, leaving his doctor mother to raise him and his sister. It was a tough upbringing. My father was very ill when he was young, and he died when I was a young teenager. There wasn't a lot of financial means, and if you grow up in a city where you can see that in front of you, but you haven't got it yourself, it is difficult. When Toto's mother couldn't afford school fees, he was removed from private school. My mother brought us up and she was a doctor in Vienna, and there wasn't really any financial background, and she still managed to get us going to a private school in Vienna because she felt that the languages were important. So then we were taken out of class because the school fee wasn't paid. So I needed to go back to class to pick up my bags and have the humiliation of packing your bag because your school fees weren't paid. Toto's first taste of motorsport came at the age of 17, when he was watching a friend race at the Nürburgring. I wasn't following any racing, but just before I got my driving license, a friend of ours took my group of mates out for a weekend to Amsterdam. But on the way back, we stopped at the Nürburgring where a very dear friend of mine, Philip Peter, was competing in the German Formula 3 Championship. He was a front runner and became an Audi Works driver later on. From the moment I came into the paddock, looking around the cars, being on the grid, I caught the bug. It was a man able or not able to control this machine, and it felt like modern gladiators. This is when I said to myself, I want to become a racing driver. I was 17 at the time. Following that, he had a brief racing career, competing in Austrian Formula Ford and winning the class of the 1994 Nürburgring 24 hours. Toto retired from racing three years later, transferring his competitive ambitions to the business and investment world. Toto founded his own investment company, March 15, in 1998, after studying at the Vienna University of Economics and Business, followed by March 16 in 2004. But Wolf's entrepreneurial abilities were evident even as a teenager. He started his first business selling candles at an anti-racist protest in Austria in the 1990s. He explained, It was a silent protest with the topic of lighting a candle and walking, protesting against racism. I thought, there's going to be a few thousand people, and they're not going to have any lights or candles. Initially focusing on internet and technology companies during the 1990s tech boom, the company developed strategic investments in medium-sized industrial companies and publicly traded companies. Among these investments was the initial public offering of HWA AG, the company in charge of developing and racing Mercedes-Benz cars in the German Touring Car Championship as well as Mercedes' successful Benz Formula 3 engine program. In 2015, Toto sold his stake in HWA AG. Toto started a new business in 2002, co-owning a racing driver management company with two-time Formula World champion Mika Harkonnen. Toto returned to racing the following year, winning once and finishing sixth in the FIA GT World Championship. Intriguingly, despite becoming Red Bull's main rival in Formula 1, Wolf raced in blue Red Bull overalls and a car emblazoned with the energy drink company's branding between 2004 and 2006. Alongside Carl Wendelinger, Dieter Cuesta, and Stefano Zonka, Wolf took class victory in the 1,000 miles of Interlagos in 2004. Amid treacherously wet conditions, it was Wolf who posted the quickest lap time. Wolf, Cuesta, and Philip Peter also won the Masano six hours in 2005. And in 2006, the trio, along with German legend Hans Joachim Stuck, became the first winners of the Dubai 24 hour race. At all of these events, Wolf wore Red Bull colors. At the same time, Wolf's financial success enabled him to diversify the capital at his investment firm by investing in a variety of different sectors. One of the most notable opportunities presented to Toto was the opportunity to invest in the cash strapped F1 team Williams. 
Toto Wolff's investment firm purchased an equity stake in Frank Williams and Patrick Head's Formula One team in 2009. Williams and Head had been the sole co-owners of Williams since its inception in 1977, and there had long been opposition to selling off a portion of the company. This shift in strategy was prompted by the team's financial constraints. Despite this, Williams remained a legendary competitor in the world of F1, with the investment introducing Toto Wolff to the Formula One spotlight for the first time. In 2012, he was named executive director of Williams F1, and the team took its last race win to date at that year's Spanish Grand Prix with Pastor Maldonado. A year prior, Toto had married then DTM driver Susie Stoddart. Susie has wanted to be a race driver since the age of eight. Formula One was her dream, and in 2014 she got her chance, driving for Williams in Free Practice One at the British Grand Prix, becoming the first woman to do so in more than two decades. Susie Wolfe is now regarded as one of the most successful female race drivers in history. While she raced in the DTM from 2006 to 2012, her greatest popularity and success came later in her career as the CEO of Venturi Racing, a Formula E team. Susie started karting at the age of eight and was named British Woman Kart Racing Driver of the Year in 1996. She rose to the ranks of Formula Renault, Formula 3, and DTM, with the development driver role with Williams in Formula 1 serving as a pinnacle of her racing career. Wolf described the dynamics of the couple who have racing in their blood. Susie is the system maintainer of the Wolf family. We are very lucky because we are very similar in terms of characters and tasks. The family comes first and then comes the job. But this common field of interest, motorsport, is what we've always done. That's why people talk about it at dinner. The mix of both makes it. Wolf left Williams F1 in January 2013 to become an executive director of the Mercedes-AMG Petronas Formula 1 team with business partner Rene Berger becoming a non-executive director. In addition to joining the team as managing partner, he also acquired 30% of Mercedes-Benz Grand Prix Limited, with a further 10% held by Nicky Lauder and 60% by the parent company. Wolf assumed responsibility for all Mercedes-Benz motorsport activities, a position previously held by Norbert Haug. Wolf sold two-thirds of his Williams stock to American businessman Brad Hollinger in 2014. Wolf sold his remaining shares in the Williams team on March 9, 2016. As co-owner of both Williams F1 and Mercedes Grand Prix, Wolf achieved numerous podiums and successes for both teams, including a 1-2-3-4 finish in his home race of Spielberg, Austria, as well as a 1-2-3-4 finish in both qualifying and race classifications at Monza, Italy. Wolf's achievements were recognized through the presentation of a John Bolster Award through Toddart at the 2018 Autosport Awards. Wolf subsequently received the President's Award from Toddart, along with team non-executive chairman Nicky Lauder at the 2018 FIA prize-giving gala held in St. Petersburg, Russia. Mercedes-Benz had its most successful motorsport year in history in 2018. The company won both F1 titles, F2 with George Russell, European F3 with Mick Schumacher, all three DTM titles with Gary Paffert, securing the driver's title, both F1 esports titles, and numerous championships in customer racing. Mercedes continued its success in 2019 by clinching a sixth consecutive double world championship at the Japanese Grand Prix. When the team secured the constructors' title and only one of Lewis Hamilton and Valtteri Bottas remained in contention for the drivers' title, this is an unprecedented achievement in the history of the sport. As of 2019, Wolf was the only team principal who has won more than five consecutive double world championships. In 2020, Mercedes secured a seventh consecutive double world championship. The championships set an all-time record of consecutive constructors championships, ahead of the six Ferrari achieved from 1999 to 2004. During the same season, Lewis Hamilton became the most successful driver in terms of race wins at the 2020 Portuguese GP and won his seventh World Drivers' Championship at the Turkish GP tying Michael Schumacher's record. In 2021, the team won its eighth consecutive Constructors World Championship while finishing second in the drivers. Since the introduction of the turbo hybrid regulations in 2014, Mercedes has won 111 of 180 races under Wolf's leadership. The team has taken 119 of 180 pole positions, 73 front row lockouts, and 247 from 360 possible podium finishes. Since Wolf joined Mercedes in 2013, the team has achieved a winning percentage of 57%. These figures demonstrate just how overwhelming Mercedes' dominance has been under Toto Wolf's leadership, as well as the extent to which the Austrian has influenced the sport.
While the new regulatory era introduced in the 2022 season has presented new challenges for Mercedes, with the team falling behind the front runners, it will undoubtedly be Wolf's skills and running that can bring the Silver Arrows back into contention.